I'm Alex Guarnaschelli from Alex vs. America, and I'm going to cover some French cooking techniques that I've learned in my travels, particularly when I was working in France. Let's start with a mirepoix. A mirepoix is an assembly of vegetables, traditionally onion, celery, and carrots. So for a mirepoix, how do we do that? Generally, a mirepoix is a place where I might use some parts of the vegetable that in other more finessed places, I wouldn't. But I'm gonna use all of this otherwise. For carrots, I would just cut that end bit off, right? Because a mirepoix, we generally don't wanna waste much. Now, I do peel the onion. So I just cut the top and bottom piece off and make a little cut down the middle and use that thumb paring knife. Look at that, peeled, right? Now, for a mirepoix where there's a longer cooking time, we wanna keep it kinda big. We want some nice vegetables that are gonna have some texture and some tooth on it when they're done cooking. So I even, I go like almost two inches on all these cuts. So I cut them all a similar size. Onions are pretty, you know, decently fragile and they tend to fall apart. Cut it kinda big. So there's an example of a little mirepoix. Other cool little Frenchy knife cuts, a macedoine, which is really just like a dice of vegetables that are cooked together. One of my favorites, a julienne. You can do this with a knife. You can also cut these on a mandolin. A little matchstick almost. And then a brunoise is just a fancy pants term for a small dice, technically 1 16th of an inch. Tiny, tiny. A chiffonade. Generally, a chiffonade applies to basil uniquely. And then I just roll them up like a little herb burrito. Nice and tight. And you're just gonna slice across that little burrito of basil leaves, nice and thin. All right, so we're exploring the technique of sauteing, which is just something that is cooked quickly in a little bit of hot fat. I've got some cremini mushrooms here washed with the stems on. I love a cremini or a white button. Just slice them up. Decently thick, you can saute at pretty much any vegetable or anything. A little bit of olive oil. I'm gonna heat up some fat here. Heat your oil till it's quite hot. It shimmers, separates from the center, and then make a nice layer. Don't crowd the pan too much. If you wanna saute well, a nice kind of overlapping single layer, right away a pinch of salt. Why? We're sauteing high heat in a little bit of fat to draw the water out. Salt also draws the water out of food and it makes it taste good. And then just some pepper. Notice how as I'm peppering, I move all around so that I'm getting pepper everywhere. The minute the salt and the pepper hits that wet food, it lands and it sinks. So you wanna sprinkle. The steam inside the mushrooms is escaping leaving us with a more delicious mushroom. So now, you can take a couple of sprigs of fresh thyme or a sprig of fresh rosemary on the stem, or both, and at this point, drop them right in there. And those are kind of our secret little flavor enhancers. When you saute quickly high heat, you wanna add garlic, add it somewhere here closer to the end. I'm gonna add about two cloves worth of minced garlic. You see we're at the end, the heat's mellow. The garlic is a late entry. It doesn't need to be in there long. And maybe some like parsley, you know, minced at the, at the last minute. Then right out of the pan, a little saute. Piping hot, this is how we do it in restaurants. It's like aromatherapy for your stomach. Mm. All right, now we're gonna explore a cool French technique called flambéing, which just means flamed. So good, and you're gonna look really cool doing it, you know what I mean? In this case with tangerines, I'm just gonna take a little bit of butter and melt it. You want a little bit of heat on your pan, right? And again, if it gets a little hot, take it off for a second, and I'm gonna add some of these just tangerine sections. Right, and I just peeled and separated them. Give those a minute to soften. Let them gather up the butter. Tiniest pinch of salt, tiny. Third of a cup of sugar. I'm using De Marrera, fancy pants. You could use brown sugar if you like. All right, so we're kind of ready for our flambe moment. I like often when the liquor matches either the exact ingredient 
or goes really well with it. So in this case, for tangerines or citrus, I always go to orange liqueur. Now, you can take it off the heat and pour the alcohol and put it back on. You can pour it over it and just step back and tilt. See that? That's the alcohol that flamed and is now just burning off. And so as you stir it, the sugar and the butter come up to meet that orange liqueur. Hmm. Flambéed orange sauce right over the ice cream. I mean, come on. And you see a hot orangey tangerine sauce and those tangerines. This serves just me or two people. All right, so now I'm gonna show you a technique you may not have heard of. This is a cool little French technique en papillote. Anything, fish, vegetables, a piece of meat and vegetables, wrapped and then baked. It's almost steamed in the oven in its little paper or aluminum pouch. So I create the pouch first by folding a piece of aluminum. I'm gonna cook some bass with some herbs and lemons, super simple. So three little lemon slices or so on the bottom and then my piece of fish. I keep the skin on. You could totally take it off. I like kind of peeling it back and just eating it. This is a beautiful way to just kind of steam fish. Right away, right on top of there, some generous seasoning. Tiny drizzle of olive oil right on that fish. Here I've got two of my favorites, dill and parsley. And then a few more lemon slices. Tiny splash of water. Fold the first side. Imagine this is like wrapping a really great holiday present. Fold it twice over on this side. That seals it. And that's what I love about the aluminum is it just, you just press and it creates that sealed edge like that. And you'll see I've just folded the edge around. And again, just pinch it closed and open it up a little bit. And this is gonna go in an oven at 425 for about 12 to 15 minutes more or less, depending on the thickness of the fish and your other ingredients. And then we're gonna break it open and we're gonna have a really good meal. Get it off this hot tray. It's pretty hot when it comes out of that hot oven. You can even kind of stand it up a little bit dramatically on the plate. And we can just make a little cut. See that steam? Look at how beautiful this is inside. Look at that. Slide it right off. Drop all those juices. Mmm. Fish flakes off, look at that. Perfect. Slides right off the skin. Mmm. You know what, um, I have to go right now. It's a really good technique, but I'm gonna go somewhere in private and eat all of this.